Happy Friday, everybody. This is Dave hosting you here with The Reliquary. Before we get into today's video, I just kind of want to make a note that uh, with everything that's going on in the world right now with COVID-19, there's going to be uh, some delays uh, in between videos. I do apologize in advance, but that's just the nature of the world right now with the pandemic. So without further ado, here comes the next review, courtesy of Custom 3D Stuff, a guy by the name of Todd Blatt, and here's the intro. Oh, I'm telling you, it's going to be great. When have I ever steered you wrong? What, are we going somewhere? Yeah. And what do we want? In a galaxy where living on the streets means guessing what something is worth. This, this is worth... Five, six hundred credits, that's more than you said we need. Ooh, this sounds expensive. We have this, refined hyperfuel. It's worth at least 800 credits, maybe more. But you just said... All we ended up with was that. Mm -mm. I figure it's worth about 10,000, maybe enough for a decent buy-in. Damn it, Han, how much is it worth? <laughs> you want a rematch? Oh. In a galaxy where living on the streets means going on a joyride in a stolen speeder with a stolen canister filled with stuff that you want to use to bribe your way past security so you can steal more stuff. Uh, how much is it worth again? We can get our own ship. See the galaxy, all of it. Okay, enough for your own ship. A coaxium. No. Wow, are you pushy? What do you even- Oh, is that what the stuff in the canister is called? Relaxing! Enough to power a fleet! Or blow us all straight to hell! Really? You sure? Doesn't look like much. It's, it's very explosive stuff. <laughs> okay! I take it all back! This coaxium stuff is not to be messed with. In a galaxy where the cut from your heist is the exact same thing you started out with. Can somebody at least tell me what this stuff was used for? I still don't have a clue what's going on here. Alright, Kira did mention hyperfuel. Falcon, hyperlight speeds, no seatbelts. Good job, hon. Tell me what you brought me first. In a galaxy where coaxium hyperfuel is the ultimate in underground currency. It's always a good idea to inspect your product before delivery. Always proceed with caution. And above all else, careful. No, you be careful. Never trust a scoundrel. How'd you do it? Wasn't easy. No, I mean, how'd you do it looks exactly like the real thing. That's because it is the real thing. Not quite, but pretty darn close. In a galaxy where a single vial of coaxium is your golden ticket to freedom, go ahead and take it. All right, so here it is. So it actually came a little bit earlier. It's kind of really funny about this is considering what is in this package, Imperial Services had to inspect it. I want every part of this ship checked. <laughs> they actually had to check it out. Apparently it looked like some sort of an explosive, which I find kind of funny considering that, you know, it's, it's very explosive stuff. So we're gonna zip this side open and we'll see what Todd has provided us today. I believe this is the opening here. And, oh, the same familiar packet that gave me such a hard time last time, but oh wait, Imperial inspection team opened it for me. It's okay, considering what they considered or what they thought might've been in here. Oh, okay, sliding around. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's kind of, it's kind of banged up. I don't know if that's because customs or what, but we'll go over that in a second. So here we have the coaxium vial. Open her up. Oh, there's the little crystal in there. Remove, so I will remove such. I'm assuming that's the kill key. Rotate, interesting, interesting. All right, so this one also just says remove. Oh, it's another blue one, okay. Nice to have a little backup in there. All right, so there's the coaxium itself. Going blue, well, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna turn this light off here. There's your coaxium. We're gonna take this down and I'm gonna, oh, that's interesting. I don't know if that's because of the LED. 
All right, I'm gonna take this to an area where we can do some more close-up shots of it and we're gonna have some more fun. Now again, when this got in the mail, I don't know if this is all residue from the machining process, something that, that happened during transport when CBSA opened her up, I don't know. Really? You're, you're, you're gonna do this right now. While, while I'm doing my video. Thanks. But anyways, pops open with this lovely little crystal in its side. Now I'm gonna go over each little section separately now, turning the light on is simply, where's the LED side? Here it is. So you simply screw it down and it applies pressure. Now, what is kind of cool, and I think this is just because of the way the light refracts based on how you turn it, but if you watch the coaxium itself, it kind of glows, which is kind of cool. Now, a couple things to kind of note um, with this. Proportionally, it's perfect. You can see the coaxium in there. You can see through the viewports. The canister itself, aside from the grunge and the wear and tear that seems to have come with it, like the epoxy is still leaking over the edge. I would have liked this to be a little cleaner, to be honest. The mesh is actually a higher quality mesh than the one they use in the movie. I would like to think that this, if this were a real world thing, that the mesh would be more of this quality and not of the quality in the film. Canister, with the exception of just how how much cleanup I'm gonna have to do to make it look, you know, show quality, that drops it down to about a six. If it was just cleaned up, cleaned up, it would be beautiful. And I'll, I'll clean it up and I'll show you the results later on. The coaxium vial itself is well thought out. The machining is well done. The proportions are correct. Or again, everything. And I like this little effect and I don't know if that's intentional or just because the coaxium is a little off center. That in and, uh, in and of itself is also a little bit of a critique in that if you're using laser etching, which is what he says this is, laser shattering, then you should have more precision and have it more centered. A suggestion I would have is get a glass tube, 3D print the coaxium star itself, fill the glass tube halfway up with resin, put the coaxium in, center it, and then fill up the rest. So you have a combination of 3D printed epoxy and glass. And if you do that, I'm 99.99% sure you're going to have a flawless replica. Now from a distance, this thing looks amazing. Absolutely amazing. He does offer the vial, uh, the coaxium LED in white. Um, and it may order that one separately just to compare the two side by side because in the movies, it's kind of iffy as to whether the coaxium is blue or white. It kind of fluctuates depending on the scene. I was actually super excited for this one. I was looking forward to rating it at about a nine. It's just got a lot of nicks and I mean, a little bit here and there is one thing, but I mean, this is a lot. I'm kind of disappointed in that regard. Um, I would have liked a much cleaner product. I'm gonna have to drop this down to a five just based on the condition that it arrived in. Like, I, I hope I can uh, clean this up. It had the potential to be a nine out of 10. Thank the maker. This oil bath is going to feel so good. So I managed to do some cleanup on this thing. I was able to give it an acid bath. I've been able to take away nearly 99% of the epoxy that was uh, kind of leaked all over this thing. It looks a, a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. I love that effect. If not for the scratches uh, and the gunk, and I'm going to get this harsh light out of my face. There we go. If not for the tarnishing and the over seepage of epoxy or... Um, whatever you use to seal it, it would have been a solid seven out of 10. The only reason I would drop it down um, from a 10 to a seven based on everything else is because of the crystal itself. And as much as I freaking love that effect, um, one, it's not centered. In the, in the films, the crystal is not transparent or translucent in any way. This um, alone is about a seven out of 10 just because it's not quite accurate. This, however, aside from, again, the the scratches and the tarnishing that came with it, I would actually bump this up to a solid 10 simply because the mesh actually kicks it up a notch. A higher quality mesh than that portrayed in the films. Together as a whole, <sighs> six out of 10. It could have been about a nine, um, but just because of the condition it arrived in. And I'm gonna attribute some of that to CBSA opening up the package. Um, but I'm also going to attribute some of that to just not going over quality control and making sure your product was clean before delivery. Other than that, it is a beautiful piece of, of replica, beautiful piece of machining. Um, the lathe work is great. I know the attention to detail that you've put in with the angles on the fins, uh, and everything else. Um, I would just make a few little changes, uh, for next time. Other than that, I love it.
Thanks everybody for joining the Reliquary once more. Next time is hopefully gonna be three weeks away. We have two different variations of Beskar coming in, one from an American company, one from an Australian company. We're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison, see which one is cooler. We've got the Negotiator uh, lightsaber coming from Vader's Vault, followed by Sideshow Collectibles, The Child, which I am so excited about. That one is gonna be amazing. I, it's just gonna be a long while before it gets here. Please subscribe, uh, it's been fun. Uh, and uh, we'll catch you on the next side of the reliquary. Not bad. If you'd only had this little green silop, you would have beaten this.